Hey homies, it's your boy Ash bringing a brand new Shindle Live video. So today we're going to be doing a part two to my uh what's it called? Which Akuma Bloodline is the best? Uh if you haven't already seen that one, I will be putting it what's it called in the description so you can go check it out. And I also want to apologize for you know not being as active as I can be. I've been uh dealing with a lot of stuff school related. I've been because I'm starting school literally tomorrow. Well, today, depending on the video, when it, this video comes out. But yeah, I hope that you guys had a great day so far. And yeah, let's get into the video, boys. Number five, we have the obvious one, which is the regular Akuma Bloodline. It has two good moves, and one of them is being the Genjutsu that puts you in the Genjutsu. And then, like the what's it called, the Dokai Genjutsu, you can actually like stun them properly. Even and even after they get stunned, they still have like a giant red thing on their screen, so like you can kind of block them, like their vision sort of. Then we have the auto dodge, obviously, that's a very good uh, thing. It used to be meta a lot of time. I know a lot of people still use this one, but they don't really use anything else. The first move is completely useless because it only targets people who use like the regular Taijutsu moves that don't spawn or what's it called? Elements. And most people don't really use elements anymore, which kind of makes the first move not viable. And since they cannot copy uh, what's it called? Kekka Genkai and then, you know, what's it called? sub jutsu moves then it's pretty useless in that aspect so like this is not viable the modes the modes are pretty basic at stage one you have what's it called you have really a small amount of uh stat boost and then what's it called i guess you get a faster walk speed and a faster m1 and then through ce1 to c3 you have the same c move which is just this little bubble and then within that bubble you the people that are in it cannot move well they can move but it's very, they just become slow it lasts for a little bit not too long but not like short either exactly and overall it's not a bad bad like what's it called thing but compared to other things at stage one to stage three there are better things at stage four now you can see a massive quality difference with uh, what's it called you finally get your susano skeletal arm and everything doing 11k per m1 and then you get your c which is Amaterasu, it's the same through C6, I mean through C7, which is the full Susana, I believe. Then you get C5, which is your incomplete Susana, where, what's it called, you finally, well, my bad, it's your Stelto incomplete Susana. So right now your M1s get a buff and damage and everything, and your C is still Amaterasu, you do not have a Q. Well, you do have a Q, but it's more like, it's just, it's literally just a block breaker kind of like your what's it called heavy attack for when you just have a regular weapon then you have c6 which is your incomplete susano you finally get this of the skeletal one looks clean and then you have the choice between weapons which you can change over here where is it right over here on this stone tablet you can change your skeleton well what how your susano looks and everything and then you have the choice of like what weapon it does. You finally get a Q at stage six, but at stage five, you don't really get anything. Then you have stage seven, which is the full Susano, which is kind of clean, you know? Your M1s, M1s do has like a little bit of increase, but not that much when you're stage six and everything. Then, you know, you have your Cs to Amaterasu, that's joining your Qs pretty much thing no qualitative difference so like overall it's not bad the what's it called the mode carries it heavy it has one viable move which is really the auto dodge since it's instant cast unless you dodge from like everything so it's a pretty good move in that aspect and uh it's not bad to use it for and everything so i don't really mind it but yeah that's then even though the full susano is goaded and all but compared to everything else on the list it's just mediocre at best but yeah, that's pretty much why I think this is number five. Up to the next one. Number four, this one was kind of hard for me because it was between Itachi and Forge, but ultimately I decided between on Forge because of one thing and one thing only. It's like more of a overall aspect of things. With Forge, we can create a lot of combos by something that a good Bankai user against a good Forge user, the Bankai user, you can 
pop every time only reason is because that what's it called one of the forge moves well two of the forge moves are pretty much used but let's talk about it right so you have three moves the first one is the dimensional pull which pretty much pulls them into a separate dimension and they are in this white room and they disappear overall and then they come out and like a few seconds later sometimes they get flung sometimes they don't so it's kind of hard so like if you're not like good with your aim or like predicting it's kind of hard to like hit your combo after next we have commonly probably the better dimension pull of both of them this one directly puts them in a dimension and while they're in it you can somewhat hit them because they don't get flung and they get stunned they get like one second stun after being you know pulled out of the dimension next you have the intangibility it's not a bad move if you're trying to run away but then again your enemy can like follow you so that doesn't really make it viable the one thing that is probably useful for is if you're doing an m you're you're about to get clapped in an m1 combo and then you got push and you casually put on your three but the drawback to that being intangible you cannot do anything meaning you cannot charge you can charge chakra you can't use your moves and everything and it takes your stamina which makes you the use of high juicy moves like uh what's it called blossom spear blossom smash blossom spear a uh, heavenly surprise i mean i think yeah those moves are not viable anymore since they are your good combo extenders for taijutsu moves and then if you're using anything like the hawk i mean the eagle spirit summon then it's just not it's just not a viable move at all then we have the mode the mode is probably the best part about this entire kg with good stats on stage one but the c is kind of like the third move you can't really do anything you can't even like charge your chakra you can't hit you can't do but you do get a speed move so this good move is pretty good for running away or surprise attack so i'll give it like you know i'll give it like that prop then we have stage two stage two is finally when we see a quality difference between we see a quality difference between stage one and stage two you get your spell to susano and then not only that your q becomes this this is kind of like the second move but you throw shurikens and it does like NK damage and then don't forget your m1s do 14,083 which is good and then you have your c3 which is your incomplete susano and this is the final this is one of the final stage before the full susano nothing's different between the q and the c then we finally have the full susano looks sick and everything cool and everything but still just like kind of the same if it wasn't because of what's it called the you spec and the first two moves on it then this would probably be a little bit worse than the regular akuma but it kind of it brings it above but this is still an ss like genkai because the combos i've seen made with this are still goaded but i just think that uh third one is better the third one on this list so let's get to that and like i said the third one on this list is obviously bankai akuma bankai akuma is probably one of my favorite uh Akuma's to play around with besides Sotary. It has three moves. The first move being the auto dodge. Pretty much this allows you to do a lot of things and what's it called? It can't really be countered in any shape or form because even though you can hit your juices while being in the auto dodge, you, and what's it called? It creates a clone of you. It's, so if I use it like let's see if I, let's say if I was tree jumping right and then I use it like this, but then I turn around and then hit you with like my third move it'll teleport me back to the spot that i used it on which is pretty crafty and nifty then we have the genjutsu which is kind of better than the what's it called the akuma genjutsu but not like it's not that much it's still the same it stuns them in place and then it lasts a little bit longer than the regular akuma genjutsu which is like a prop and i kind of did use my third move before which is the amaterasu like this i'll just call it well not blitz but just kind of like amaterasu auto back thingy or Amaterasu uh, Fireballs, what is, what is it called? It's called Fire Blaze, Amaterasu Blaze, we'll just call it that. It pretty much sends uh, a bunch of Amaterasus at a target. As long as you're within reach, it will auto track to them no matter what. That's pretty crafty and then like the bird damage is 1,200 and then you get 42,000 just off the bat if they're not blocking. And it's really cool when you use it with what was it called? Your first move since they're kind of both like the hand signs of the third one is like pretty much non-existent since they're so small and then we have the mode the mode is pretty nice and everything your c your c is pretty nifty the first c you have two differences your first c allows you to 
teleport kind of a teleport behind the person and it does 31k damage which is pretty nice you don't have anything else you get like of course the faster m1 and everything like all akumas do then your stage 2 you get the skeletal one and 50 then your q gets replaced with you know your old c now your c becomes a little mo so this c right here it takes away people's mode chakra health and stamina so it's like good if you get them in the games you should and use your c right after because if you're doing because again most of the times if someone runs out of mode the match is pretty much over then we have your third thing which is just the incomplete susano as you can see right here nice model good at m1s your q is the same so is your c then we finally have the c4 this now we have a different q sort of so we have two q's the first q is the one that we've seen before your c is pretty much the same just with a different uh animation this time but you have two q's if you're not directly aiming at the person you do this q which just sends out a bunch of slashes it does mad damage trust me but if you don't if you're aiming directly at the person you will do the second q which is pretty much the what's it called the one that teleports you behind them with a bunch of crows with the crow after effect so overall this is a pretty good one it's more damage while obito's well forge akuma is more you know combo beginning this one you can do just a fair amount of damage off the moves alone which is pretty gnarly and i think like it definitely deserves its number three spot all right second on our list is one that i had a lot of trouble deciding whether it's number one or number two they're not that far off of each other in terms of ability my number one two if you don't already know my number one Sotary. but this one this one's an interesting one right personally i think that this has one move that outshines she sweets better and this is just pure damage this is pure damage uh what's it called akuma which is probably the first one that we've seen that's really pure damage there's no like the only thing that it has that all akumas have is like either an auto dodge or, or what's it called a counter of some sort which is exactly what the first move is for this one Unlike the Sotary one, this one's probably the better of the two. If we're using the Sotary and then the Ryan counter, this one, while you use it, it's more low key. And if someone does hit you, you will teleport behind them with a bunch of Amaterasu flame. So you will do high damage and then you the burn damage with 1,200 depending on your stats. Obviously, that's going to hurt a lot. And if you get targeted by a lot of people, oh, they're just dead. Then we have an instant cast uh, Amaterasu Shidori. Pretty gnarly, does like a lot of damage and it's a massive AoE, which is pretty good, but not that. It's not, it's meh, in my opinion. It has like a low stun and burn damage, which is like nice, but overall it's just, it's meh compared to a lot of the moves in the game. But I still think that the Shisui Genjutsu outshines it. Then we have the third move, which is the uh, kind of, it's kind of, it's an Amaterasu arrow, as you can see. Massive AoE, high damage, but the thing is that it's very limited in its auto tracking. And uh, what's it called? By what I mean by that is that like you kind of need like to actually have your mouse sort of aimed on them. So it's kind of like the chi blades. You need actual like accuracy to a certain. You need accuracy to a certain extent for you to actually be able to hit this move. And like again, if people are using modes. We know how fast modes are, especially those that allow them to fly or anything. It's just it's just not a viable move. It's still good if you like stun them, which most people will do. Then it's not bad. Then we have the mode. The mode is just probably it's a very good mode from the get-go. You you do not have a C, obviously I mean a Q. Your C is a what's it called? Your C is pretty much the blaze from uh what you may want to call it from bankai it has the blaze from bankai and that's pretty nice it does more damage than bankai also because i'm pretty sure it hits like twice then we have stage two which is the incomplete susano obviously just the skeletal one now you get this for a q you get you pretty much get that which is like gnarly so you have so you have what's it called you have your Q, which was your old C, your first C, and then now you have your C, which is pretty much like the third move. So if you do it properly, you could probably hit the third move and then the C, right, one after the other, because again, like, 
there's always a stun after getting hit by like anything if you're fast enough obviously then we have our c3 oh this one's gnarly like you see this again like the models are very well made and everything obviously your q is like still the same your c is also still the same no quality difference the stats on it are gnarly of course then we have our c4 which is the isusano as you see right here looks nice looks nice you know and then like what's it called our q changes it becomes the arrow instead of just you pushing out the blaze that is bankai akuma but your c becomes the other q of bankai kind of like a bankai akuma but you also have the amaterasu's burn damage and it does high damage so even though it has all that sorry so better anyways in my opinion but yeah like it's not a bad one it's still viable i still think that what's it called Sautery and uh Ryan are very close to each other in terms of combat ability and adaptability and i think they are both viable options but i just think that Sautery is better and i'm gonna explain why now unlike Ryan, Sautery is more based around uh what's it called control pretty much it has one auto dodge a counter and then a massive genjutsu so this is and mind you the game oh you're like oh that's not good ryan it's obviously better because it has more damage overall but again you would have to understand the first move for Sautery pretty much creates a bunch of these clones some of these clones will go and attack you and while while you're in this state you will also have auto dodge so even if that a Ryan user were to use their first move, it would not affect you in any shape or form because you still have that auto dodge on. Next, we have the counter kind of like Ryan, but more they're way more noticeable. And I think it, they last about the same time, doesn't matter. But this one counters them directly and then teleports them to the back, stuns them, but doesn't have any like Amaterasu, obviously not. Then we have this thing. This thing's just. Whew. This thing has the ability to hit for so much. Don't get me wrong, like, oh my, like, it's a Genjutsu. It stuns you in place. It will not push you back. Like, all Akuma Genjutsu, they will stun you in place, and which is very nice. Now, this is where, you know, like, if we're just talking, like, the first three movesets, then what's it called? Yeah, Ryan's better, but we're looking at the overall Genkai. The first stage, the first stage your C is different. Your C allows you to change the person's, kind of change the person's reality of you. So let's say if I used it right here, I would lay a dead body right here, but I could be moving around, but the person would think that I'm right there. Obviously that's counterable if someone uses auto dodge when you're about to hit them, but again, the chances of that of you like not hitting them are very slim. And you could probably combo it with your third move. Again, pretty good combos. And what's it called? Then you have stage two, which is your incomplete Susana, where you, you finally get your Q. I mean your skeletal Susana, not incomplete. <laughs> but pretty much you get this as your Q regular thing then you get this as your cue mind you this is pretty busted and it block breaks you so the chances of you like blocking is very small your c does not change then we have our c3 <clears throat> our c3 is pretty much like it's just incomplete you have the model for it looks nice of course your q and then your c are stays the same so there's so it's the same for what's it called your full skeletal susano also not much of a quality difference, but combo that I see most people do with this one is they uh, use this, then they use their Q. Oh, I messed up, but because of <clears throat> my bad, I have something stuck in my throat. But yeah, because of what's it called? Your the Genjutsu keeps you in place. You can do above a hundred k damage in less than like a second if you know if you know how to combo it properly. You literally keep them in place, do your regular M1s, and then follow it up with your Q. Uh, no one's no one no one's gonna be able to like get on you bro but yeah that's pretty much my opinion on why I, on you know all the, of these akumas obviously i think that satori is still number one because of all the reasons and like combos and everything ryan cannot compare yes ryan has the better move set if we're talking just like regular move sets if we're talking about like the first three moves they get from just the genkai itself but the minute we start using modes, it's just a quality difference overall. Because the Susano and then your Q move just obliterates anyone that really stands in your range. And then like because of this Genjutsu being able to stun the person and like do a lot of damage, that you can probably do around 200k, if not 300k in one combo. 
But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.